Today we're looking at 10 steps that we can use to achieve cinematic looking video using our iPhones and that starts right now. Hey guys, it's Ryan with the Piedmont Motion Picture Company. Thank you so much for joining me today. If this is your first time finding us, this channel is all about learning and growing as a filmmaker. So if you find this video helpful before you leave, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing if you haven't already and let's become better filmmakers together. You know, I've been making iPhone filmmaking videos on this channel for a while now, and I wanted to take a step back and make a video dedicated to people who may just be getting started with the medium. A video for someone who wants to tell stories, someone who wants to make their first film, and most importantly, someone who wants to capture it all using their iPhone. Hopefully these 10 tips that I'm about to share with you will help get you started in the right direction and ultimately help you make a better looking film with your mobile phone. Now, some of these tips are applicable to making a film with any kind of camera. So some of what you learned today can be carried over into the DSLR world when you're ready to make that transition. All right, let's get started. My first tip, and this may be a no-brainer for some, is to shoot with your phone horizontally. Shooting vertical video is going to give you a very amateurish look and should only be used in special cases. As in, if you're trying to illustrate a handheld video recording with a phone within your film, or if you are creating something for a social platform such as Instagram Stories. Otherwise, always shoot horizontally with your phone. When we are trying to create a film look, we want that widescreen aspect ratio that shooting horizontally helps accommodate. My next tip is to get yourself a dedicated video app for shooting video on your phone. There are many available, such as Mavis Pro, Moment, and Filmic Pro. But from my test, I've had the most success and ease of use with Filmic Pro. It's not a free app, and some of the Pro features require an additional cost to unlock. But if you are serious about making films with your iPhone, it will be money well spent. If you'd like an in-depth tutorial on how to get the most out of Filmic Pro, a link to that video can be found in the description below. You are going to want to set up a flat color profile and set your white balance before you start shooting. A color profile defines the colors we capture with our cameras and see on our displays. If you plan to color grade your footage later to get a really unique look, it may be best to use a flatter color profile before shooting. This will allow us more flexibility when we are trying to fine tune the image, giving us more flexibility with how much we can adjust the highlights and shadows within that image. However, if you just want to go with a more natural look or don't want to spend a lot of time color grading, you can just settle with your video app's more natural color profile. Also, be sure to set the appropriate white balance before shooting. White balance is going to affect the color temperature and tint of our images, and having it set incorrectly can lead to unnatural skin tones or an image that is either too blue, cool, or too orange, warm, than we'd like. If you are using an app like Filmic Pro, you can usually adjust this setting manually or choose an auto adjustment. The auto adjustment works well sometimes, but more often than not, we are going to want to set it manually and then be sure to lock it in place. That way the white balance isn't shifting and changing while we are shooting. Up next, we need to make sure we are using an appropriate aspect ratio and that we have our resolution set to something that is going to produce the highest quality possible for our device. The aspect ratio of an image describes the proportional relationship between its width and its height. If you are using a dedicated video camera app like Filmic Pro, you should be able to set your aspect ratio to a HD standard like 169 or to a wide cinematic standard like 239. Depending on your device, try to set your resolution and bitrate as high as you can. For instance, in Filmic Pro, if you are shooting with an iPhone 6S or higher, you can set your video resolution to 4K and use the Filmic Extreme codec which will give you the highest bitrate. Be aware that this will make the files you record very large and it may take up a lot of memory space on your device. Frame rate determines the frequency at which frames in the image are displayed. 24 FPS or frames per second is considered the film standard and is used because it gives our images a nice motion blur. 
Be sure to set your camera to 24 FPS in your video app of choice. Another tip here is to make sure and cut off all the automatic adjustments within your video app. Never rely on autofocus when trying to make a film or allow for exposure or white balance adjustments to automatically shift while you are filming. Lock all of these settings down if you can or turn them to manual so you can have complete control over your images. We don't want our shot ruined by the focus or the settings on our camera to be shifting in and out while we're trying to film. It looks very unprofessional. The more time we take to plan out our shots, angles, and composition, the better chance we have of making a compelling and interesting video image. Don't just shoot your scene without any thought. Take your time to look at your surroundings, the background, the lighting, and your subject's depth from the camera to the background. This will help you put together an image that is visually stimulating and interesting. Once you have your footage shot and transferred over to your PC, Mac, iPad, or wherever else you're choosing to edit your footage, be sure to set up your project so that it accommodates the footage that you shot. For instance, if you are using Adobe Premiere Pro, be sure to set your project up so that it works with 24 FPS footage and a 1080p timeline or a 4K timeline, depending on how you want to edit. When I'm making YouTube videos like this one, I usually work in a 1080p timeline along with my 4K footage. The resulting footage looks really great and I can use my large video files scaled down to frame things in the way I want in post. But if you're wanting the high quality 4K video exported as is, be sure to set up your timeline for 4K footage. Also, be sure to set up the correct aspect ratio during this step as well. If you chose to shoot your footage in a flat or log color profile like we discussed earlier, you're probably going to need some kind of color correction and color grading. Color correcting is usually done first. This is the process of going through and making sure your shots are the right color temperature, the exposure is adjusted properly, and that the shadows and highlights are properly adjusted. If your footage is really flat or in log, it can be kind of tough to tell how you're affecting the footage during this step. So you may want to apply a base color grade just to get your image at a good starting point. Color correct each shot and then apply an overall color grade at the end when you have all of your shots looking great to give it a really unique look. And finally, there is a ton of different accessories and gear that you can use along with your mobile phone to help improve your shots. But the only things that I think are truly necessary are a tripod, a decent audio and mic setup, and perhaps a few lights. To take things to the next level, you can invest in accessories like moment lenses, ND filters especially made for mobile phones like the ones from Polar Pro, or stabilizers like the DJI Osmo Mobile. Don't think that you need this stuff to create a wonderful film using your mobile phone, but if you're serious about making the best possible mobile film that you can, you can check out links to the gear I recommend in the description below. Okay, so how about a quick recap? Number one, always film horizontally. Two, use a dedicated video app like Filmic Pro. Number three, be sure to set up a flat color profile or a log color profile and be sure to adjust your white balance accordingly. Number four, be sure to use a cinematic aspect ratio and be sure to use the highest resolution settings available for your device. Number five, be sure to use a frame rate of 24 FPS for that cinematic look. Number six, don't use automatic settings. Be sure to set everything up for manual adjustments. Number seven, be sure to plan out all of your shots ahead of time. Number eight, be sure to set up your project settings accordingly. Number nine, if you used a flat or log color profile to film your images, be sure to color correct and color grade your footage in post. And number 10, you can use specialized gear and accessories for getting video with your phone, like lenses, indie filters, tripods, and stabilizers to help improve your images. Okay guys, with these tips, hopefully you'll be well on your way to creating your first mobile film. Get out there and get it done. Question of the day, what is your biggest hurdle when trying to create a video project with your mobile phone? Is there something holding you back? Let us know in the comments below. If you would like to help support this channel and keep us going, there are many ways you can do that. Check out our digital store for awesome filmmaking resources like our Filmic Pro LUT Pack, 
Of course, you can greatly help this channel out by sharing this video with your friends and family on social media, giving it a thumbs up, and subscribing if you haven't already. And last but not least, a big shout out to our patrons who support this channel month after month. Becoming a patron gets you exclusive perks, free resources, early looks at our films, and your name featured in episodes of the show, just like these guys. Big thanks and much love to all of our patrons. Links to everything that I just mentioned can of course be found in the description below. Thanks for coming along on this filmmaking journey with me. I am Ryan and I will see you on the next Piedmont Motion Picture Show. Bye-bye.